Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to find the interval of convergence for a power series. So there's a couple of key ideas that we're going to use. Um, and the first one is that we're going to use the ratio test to find the open interval on which the series is absolutely convergent. So um, that's just going to involve kind of a lot of algebra, um, but the ratio test is kind of fun to use, so that's not a big deal. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to test the endpoints of the interval that we get for convergence. And when we test the endpoints, we're gonna to have to use uh, any number of the series tests that you know. So for example, you might see a P-series, a geometric series, you might have to do a limit comparison, alternating series test, the harmonic series and the alternating harmonic come up a lot. Um, just any of those tests that you know. So uh, you might be wondering, why do we have to test the endpoints? Well, uh, we test the endpoints mainly because the ratio test is inconclusive when the ratio is equal to one. And it turns out that the endpoints are always going to make the ratio equal one. So it's always going to be inconclusive there and we just have to test them with some other test. So let's take a look at an example. So we have the sum from zero to infinity of negative one to the n, the quantity x minus five to the n, all over n times four to the n. So the first thing we want to do is use the ratio test, and that's going to involve uh, finding the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, um, and then setting that less than 1. So we're going to find that limit, make it less than 1, um, and kind of go from there. So usually this is called rho, so I'm going to call it rho, is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value. So first I'm going to find the n plus first term. So I'm going to replace all of the n's that you see in that general term with n plus 1. Um, so it's going to look like negative 1 to the n plus 1, x minus 5 to the n plus 1, over the quantity n plus 1, and then 4 to the n plus 1. Now I'm supposed to divide by a sub n, but almost everyone who does this, instead of dividing by a sub n, we multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So I'm going to do times, and then the reciprocal of the original nth term. So that denominator moves to the numerator, the numerator goes to the denominator. Um, it's a lot faster and a lot cleaner, and it's kind of like your next step anyway, even if you do the division. Um, so let's take a look. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, okay, so because of the absolute value, the first thing I can do is just kind of basically cancel out these negative one to the n's, negative one to the n plus one, because the absolute value is just gonna get rid of those anyway. Um, if you look, we have a lot of like common factory type things, so I'm going to box those. Um, so the x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over x minus 5 to the n, that'll simplify. 4 to the n over 4 to the n plus 1, that'll simplify. So let's see what we're kind of left with here. So since we're going to infinity, uh, n is definitely positive, so I'm going to factor it out of the absolute value. So I've got an n. Um, the x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over x minus 5 to the n reduces to just x minus 5. Um, but since it's in an absolute value, I'm going to leave it there. Because x could be positive or negative, so we actually do need to have the absolute value there. Then, uh, let's see, the n plus 1 is going to stay. So n plus 1. And then we have 4 to the n over 4 to the n plus 1, so we're left with times 4. So we have that. If you look at that and take that limit, so as far as this limit is concerned, the absolute value of x minus five might as well just be a constant. Um, four is definitely a constant. So you're really doing the limit of n over n plus one. That limit is definitely one. So all that's left over is the absolute value of x minus five all over four. And now, so that's uh, what rho has simplified to. And we know that we're going to get absolute convergence um, when rho is less than one. So let's work that out. So rho we found was this. We need it to be less than 1. That's the same as the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 4. So 4 is actually called the radius of convergence. And a lot of questions just ask for that. If that was the question, we'd be done. But it wasn't the question. So we want to find the interval that's represented by this. I actually find the easiest way to just kind of draw it. So I draw a number line. Uh, I'm going to put 5 at the center. And then I can go four in either direction. So if I go four this way, I end up at nine. If I go four this way, I end up at 
one. So I know the open interval on which this thing definitely converges is between one and nine. So that's good so far. Now what I wanna do is uh, test the endpoints. So the endpoints are one and nine. So you go back to the original series up here, I just boxed it for you, and you replace every X that you see with first one. Do the work, see what happens, so it's gonna be the sum. So this negative one to the end does not have an X. Um, if I replace X with one, I get one minus five is negative four, so that becomes negative four to the end. And then over, there are no X's here. Um, this, you can simplify it in a bunch of ways. So uh, I'm gonna multiply the, oh, I'll show you. So it's negative one times negative four all to the n over this, which gives me just negative one times negative four is four. So it's four to the n over four to the n is one. So now this becomes, and maybe you can do this in one step, that's totally fine. Um, so we have one over n. I definitely know that one over n diverges I'm gonna say it diverges because it's the harmonic series. Uh, you might say it's a P series where P is equal to one. You might use the integral test on it. You have a lot of options there. Um, but anyway, we found out it diverges at one. So let's test the next endpoint. So at X equals nine, we go back up to the original, replace every X that we see with nine. So we're gonna get negative one to the N. Nine minus five is four, so this just gives us a four to the N over no x's in the denominator and then simplify we get just a negative one to the n over n um, this definitely converges you could um, say this converges by i'm going to say it converges by the alternating series test which it does um, you could have said it's the alternating harmonic series uh, either of those would be fine and so now we know converges at nine diverges at one so we can write our interval of convergence is from one to nine, not including one, definitely including nine. All right, so that's how we can find the interval of convergence. It just involves using the ratio test, getting that open interval, and then testing the endpoints to see what's happening there. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.